After eight years, this NDP Liberal government isn't worth the cost. The Liberal appointed chair of the Green Slush Fund resigned in disgrace after it was revealed that she funneled more than $200,000 of taxpayers' money into her company. An independent report reveals that this just scratches the surface of corruption at the foundation. So, how many more liberal insiders have used the Green Slush Fund to line their pockets? The Honourable Min Minister for Innovation. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And I'm sure that Canadians who are watching this member are wondering what he's saying again, Mr. Speaker. Let me bring facts to the story. Mr. Speaker, from the moment we heard of allegation, we commissioned to have an independent investigation. We froze the fund of the, of the, of the institution, Mr. Speaker. We appointed, we accepted the resignation of the chair. The CEO has resigned, Mr. Speaker. We're going to go to the bottom of this, Mr. Speaker, and we're going to continue to help the companies in our country, Mr. Speaker. If I could ask all members to please uh, keep their comments limited to the person who is asking questions or the person who is answering them. The Honourable Member from St. Albert, Edmonton, now has the floor. Mr. Speaker, the independent report revealed that multiple board members voted to funnel money from the fund to companies that they had an interest in. This is scandalous. In the face of evidence of self-dealing and corruption, the Minister has not seen fit to fire anyone. Why? Which Liberal insiders is he protecting? Why? The Honourable Minister for Innovation. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And you know what is scandalous, Mr. Speaker? Is these Conservatives making claims, Mr. Speaker, making allegations against people, Mr. Speaker. What a responsible government does, Mr. Speaker, is when there's allegation, we investigate. That's exactly what we did, Mr. Speaker. We suspended the financing of the organization. The CEO has resigned. We have accepted the resignation of the chair, Mr. Speaker. We're going to go to the bottom of this, but we're going to continue to help companies in this country, we invest in green technologies, Mr. Speaker. Once again, I hope that all members will take the time to listen to the member who asked the question and listen to the answer as well, the Honourable Member for Louis Saint Laurent. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. After eight years of this Liberal government, unfortunately, a personality trait of this government is ethics problems. Recently, there was the $1 billion Green Fund. The Auditor General is investigating $40 million in mismanaged funds. The chair of that organization paid herself $200,000, funneling it to her own company. The Canadians who are listening to us want a clear answer from the government. How and when is this government going to hold these people accountable and pay back the money that these people used to help out their own little liberal friends? The Honourable Minister for Innovation. As you know, I have a great deal of respect for my colleague for Saint Laurent. He's an honourable man. But today, the people in Saint Laurent must be asking questions because he knows full well what the government is doing. As soon as allegations were made, we demanded an independent verification to get to the bottom of things. We suspended the organization's funds. The CEO of the organization resigned. The chair of the board of directors also resigned. We're going to continue to help Canadian companies while we handle this. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Whether it be in the lovely region of Madawaska or Restigouche, which are the most beautiful in, in the country, the tourism industry continues to draw tourism to every corner of our country. The tourism industry represents an important opportunity for growth. So much so that the World Travel and Tourism Council predicts that tourism's contribution to Canada's GDP could double by 2033. It's a golden opportunity. Can the Minister of Tourism tell us how our government is supporting Canadian tourism to continue to grow and attract more visitors? The Honourable Minister. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My colleague is right. Tourism represents 1.9 billion jobs. 
it's represented in every location throughout the country and generates $266 million a day. Yesterday, we launched the Tourism Growth Program, $108 million. That's going to be delivered through local economic agencies. These investments will support businesses and organizations to help them grow and provide authentic tourism experiences. This is an essential part of our Canadian economy. The Honourable Member from uh, Sherwood Park, Fort Saskatchewan. This NDP Liberal government spent $54 million on the Arrive Scam app, and now RCMP are investigating contractors. More evidence that after eight years, this Prime Minister is not worth the cost. Now, two senior public servants have accused each other of lying about who made the decision to hire GC Strategies. GC Strategies is a two-man company that does nothing and that subcontracts all the actual work. So will the minister responsible for this decision stand up now and explain to the House why GC Strategies was chosen? The Honourable Minister. Mr. Speaker, what I'm happy to explain to the House is how seriously our government takes allegations of inappropriate behaviour <laughs> with taxpayers' money and contracting or subcontracting. We're obviously very pleased that the committee is looking into this matter. We're pleased that the Auditor General is also seized with this question. And we're also pleased, Mr. Speaker, that uh, the Canadian Border Services Agency, when these issues came to light, took the appropriate action in internal reviews and, as was appropriate, referred any and all of these circumstances to the appropriate authorities. The Honourable Member from South Shore, St. Margaret's. South Korea's ambassador told Windsor officials that the auto giant Stellantis will employ 1,600 workers from South Korea, not Canada, at the $15 billion subsidized wow. battery plant. Every mum on a minimum wage, every couple struggling to pay their mortgage, every union assembly line worker will each pay $1,000 in taxes to subsidize these foreign workers. After eight years, this Prime Minister is not worth the cost. Will the Prime Minister ensure that all jobs at the Stellantis plant go to Canadian paychecks, not foreign workers? Here, here. The Honourable Minister for Innovation. Mr. Speaker, we will take no lessons from these Conservatives, Mr. Speaker. They have done nothing for the people of Windsor. They have done nothing for the workers, Mr. Speaker. And they have certainly done nothing for auto sector, Mr. Speaker. One thing that we have done, Mr. Speaker, is to maximize opportunities for Canadians, Mr. Speaker. And let me give him some news. The CEO of the company just confirmed that there will be 2,500 Canadian workers at the plant and up to 2,300 to build the plant, Mr. Speaker. This is what I call working for Canadians. Order. The Honourable Member from Dufferin Caledon. This minister should take a lesson from just about anyone willing to give it, and I'll tell you why. The unemployment rate in Windsor is 7%. They're bringing in 1,600 workers from Korea, That's, and this plant is going to cost $1,000 per Canadian family. Every unemployed union worker in Windsor could have this job. Instead, these incompetent, arrogant Liberals give the job to 1,600 Koreans. Will the minister promise right now the jobs will go to hard-working Canadians, not workers from any other country, including Korea? Yeah. 